Good morning, winners, and welcome to a new episode of uh, Mr. Mr. Play Sci-Fi, or I'm just going to sit here and play Titanfall. I accidentally overlapped a bit of a level. Don't get captured again, BT. I will avoid all shortcuts. Ah, oh, God, I like that. Um, so this is one of my favorite levels, but today I want to talk to you about like something that I really come to enjoy in games. Like I like a lot of sci-fi shooters. I like these arcadey shooters, and one of my favorite parts about them is the is who you are and what you are when it comes to playing this games. Now, when you play most of these games, you're uh, this super soldier, this space marine, and you have these abilities. Uh, and it, it's always really cool when you get to be a super soldier or a space marine. Um, but the reason I like the space marine so much is they they, they fill a void for us. Um, they fill a void for us. Now, a lot of times when you play something like this, uh, you get this overly cliche idea of... This this is what you were made for. You were built for this. Even now, like we all want to have a purpose. We all want to be like, I was made for this. And it's very cliche to say that. But when you play a game like this, when you play a, a game as a super soldier or a marine of some sort, you are made for this. Like this is uh, what you've been bred and built for. And it's one of those things that's I think really really epic uh, just because it's something you don't get to see very often and one of the things that I, I enjoy about this game's version of it is the oh shit can I get that And one of the things that I've really enjoyed about this game's version of it is the fact that as you're not necessarily a space marine like you would have been in... Ah, no. I missed it. You're not a space marine as you would have been in uh, Warhammer or Halo standpoints. But here, you are a, a grunt. You're a grunt. Um, you're a grunt like you would have been in almost any other aspect or point of it instead of it just being like oh hey you're you're this you're you know you, you're built you were manufactured genetically engineered and it, i enjoy this game because it's like hey you're a version of this that you didn't necessarily have to be or get the chance to be and it's nice to sit there and be able to say, hey, this is a normal guy. Um, this is the normal guy uh, that you get to play as. And you get to play as, you know, Jack Cooper. Jack Cooper was a rifleman. If you remember that all the way from the beginning when we started playing this game, you were rifleman Jack Cooper. Circumstances happen, and of course, as that trope happens, now you have armor, and you are a you're the elite. You are the space marine for it. And I enjoy this version of a split base marine because in this one it makes it feel like, oh, they're not necessarily bigger or stronger. You are... You're the same as everyone else. You're still just a human. You just have a gear and it lets you look and see the world in a little bit of a different perspective than it does for everybody else. Oh, lucky you. I detect sarcasm. Ah, and there he there's I like how strong these aliens are. That's fantastic. So that's one of the things that I, I greatly enjoy uh when playing this game or, or when experiencing it. BT. And it's the fact that, hey, you are normal. You're just a soldier. Um, it's cold, BT. Correct. Anderson's current temperature is 17 degrees Celsius, below 
below the threshold of human survival. So I enjoy that about this is the fact that you do get to be a normal person. You don't have to worry about being uh, somebody that's built. And being built is probably one of the biggest tropes of science fiction shooters, science fiction genres. Um, you look at something like Halo, for instance, which has its purpose and is built. You're built. You were constructed because there was nothing else that humanity had. You were supposed to be the way to build a better future for people so that they built you as a warrior and to know nothing else and to think and to be smarter and to be different. Um, and then if you look at uh, Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, uh, Space Marines. Space Marines come from very select planets where they look for the best and the brightest, the people that show aptitude above everybody else, and they pick them, and those are the people that they want to be their, their soldiers. And we are duty bound to uphold and fulfill special operation two one seven. Recommend we locate Anderson's wrist mounted device before proceeding. I didn't see any device on Anderson. It must be on the other half of his corpse. I detect a breach in the security services building. I will provide access. I will remain here and scan the ring structure while you investigate the facility. Next time you can throw me. Noted. And I, I enjoy that aspect. I enjoy being able to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to get quiet. I like being able to listen to the cutscenes, so I, I don't want to necessarily take it away from you guys and just talk over them the entire time. So for these breaches, hopefully there'll be a cutscene or something will be happening. That's so cool. I like how they're decrepit and they're dead and they're they're not even really a threat to me. They are like zombies almost. Let's just get out of here. It's so unique to see this. But that's one of those things where when you look at it, it's these, you know, villains, uh, when they go out, or when these marines, they go out and pick them and they build them, uh, they only get to think a certain way. Like, as a space marine, it's one of the few issues I've always had with the idea of breeding somebody exclusively for uh, combat purposes. You, you take away so much more, so many other experiences that they might or might not have been able to have. Uh, and... If you think about it this way, if you train people the exact same way, so let's go with the Halo thing, and you, so if you train everyone to be the exact same way, and like I said, we're gonna we're gonna go with Halo here because I know Halo. Uh, they go and capture these kids at very early ages, train them, teach them everything they think they should know. Singularity moment here, guys. Whoop. He's dead. Uh, remember? Oh, up here. And you think about training these kids. So they've been training these kids from the same age to do the exact same thing, to think the same way. While some of it might have been a very good thing, the other part of it is, well... Oh, God. 
Uh, you think about it, like, the other thing is that these kids now all know only the same thing. They can all only fight the exact same way. And it's a shame to actually have that uh, in a fighting force. Because... It, you only get so much abilities there. You only get so many capabilities. And by by destroying it, by limiting them and only taking so much and training them all to be the exact same, you're really cutting off what they're going to be able to do. Because the key thing about most of our servicemen nowadays and training them when they're older is they have so much life experience. You take the experience that they have and you make it fit to the experience of uh, th what you need them for. So if you have someone who's extremely good at math and then you're like, hey, we need you to do an artillery job, well, that math angle shit like that's going to be a lot better for them. They're going to be much more capable of uh, firing those weapons. And it's, it's a fantastic idea to actually sit there and do that. And while it's cool, it's like, oh, no, they've trained. All they know is combat. They don't know how to lose. Or whatever thing you want to tell yourself, you've limited what they know by Uh oh. Um your I love how they switch. You're only giving them so many things that they can do. Uh, but that's where we're going to end this conversation. We're going to pick back up on this in a minute, guys, because I know I've rambled a little bit talking to myself here. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And as always, keep it weird.